Hey guys, Greg here, and let's solve product of array except self. So we're given an integer array nums, and we need to return an answer array such that each answer at i is equal to the product of all elements of nums except nums at i. And so this spot should be replaced by the multiplication of the other ones, which is 2 times 3 times 4, which is 24. This second spot should be replaced by 1 times 3 times 4, which is 12. This should be replaced by 1 times 2 times 4, as it is. And and this one times two times three. So it's simply each location is just the multiplication of all of the other numbers in the array. And this example just shows that you can have negative numbers as well as zero. If you had any zeros in there, you're gonna get a lot of zeros in the answer. If there's a zero here, well, it's going to make all of the other spots zero except itself, because this is the only spot where you're not actually including zero in the multiplication. Hence, that's the only spot where you get a non-zero number. So the brute force method for this is going to yield an O of n squared solution and it basically does exactly what your mind would do which is okay we need to fill up each of the positions in the array let's think about filling each of them up one at a time so we're going to fill up the first one okay well we'll set i equal to the first spot and then we'll send j through all of the indices and you just need to carry on this multiplication such that you don't include the same position so here when j is equal to i we actually don't include that here we get our multiplication it's going to get built up as two and then we multiply it by three so it's going to turn into six and then we again multiply it by four and so we're going to get 24 as the answer right here and you could do that through all of the indices i then over to here and we would send j through the other indices so it'd be one times well not that position times three times four and you could get that equal to 12. you could code that but it's going to be a very slow brute force solution so we're not going to use that now here's where we're going to get an o of n solution so basically notice something is that if if you're looking at say this position right here or if you were to multiply all of this stuff together and multiply all of this stuff together well you're going to get 1 and 12 and then you can simply just multiply 1 and 12 and then therefore your position here your answer is actually going to be 12. the multiplication operation works like this you can multiply all the stuff to the left and all the stuff to the right and then you can just multiply those things together to get your original answer and this is actually going to yield an o of n solution let me show you how now we're going to to build up two auxiliary arrays we're going to build up a left and right array so starting with left what is this well it's basically at this position i want this to be the multiplication of all the stuff that's to the left of it and let's just pretend that there's a one outside of both sides because then if you multiply something by one it doesn't really matter so the idea behind this is if you have a left and right array where this is all the stuff that's to the left and this is all the stuff that's to the right well the answer is just going to be the multiplication of those two things as we just specified so we'll set up this multiplier which starts at 1 and so we're going to immediately place this as the multiplier in this thing's position all the stuff to the left of it the multiplication of that is just 1. now once we're here we actually need to multiply by this value and that's going to be 1 so that doesn't really change anything if you look over here we're going to immediately plug this in as our multiplier and this is still the multiplication of all the stuff to the left it's simply just 1 times 1. but now things get interesting because we need to multiply our multiplier by 2. So we get, of course, 2. And now that we have that, we immediately plug this in as our multiplier. And notice that here, from this thing's point of view, the multiplication of all the stuff to the left of it, it's 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2. And once we're here, we need to multiply this by 3. So we'll get 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. We move over here and we plug this in. Now, technically, you might multiply our multiplier by 4, but we're not actually going to use this anymore because we are going to go outside the array. So notice Notice that this left array, each of these positions, it's always the multiplication of all the stuff to the left. Now we can do the right array by pretty much the same thing. We would just go backwards because we'd start from the right. We'd have a multiplier starting at one and we'd immediately place this as one. But now we have a four over here. And so we multiply it by four. So now our multiplier is four. We immediately plug this in right here, but now we need to multiply it by three. I'm gonna stop writing it down, but it's 12. So we have 12, we multiply it by two and that gets 24. We have 24 and then we're outside of the array okay and then as we said this is actually really really easy from here our full answer array which is literally what we want to return is just each of these positions multiplied by each other okay so we can do that by just going through the array one more time that's 24 that's 12 that is 8 and that is 6 okay and if you were to check that is definitely the right answer okay now why is this an o of n solution well it's o of n because we go through the array once to build up the left array we 
can go through backwards to build up the right array. And then one more time we go through the array. So we basically go through the array three times and three is just O of three times N. It's still O of N. And so that is going to be a linear algorithm. Okay, so here's our code. We're gonna start our left multiplier equal to one. That's basically outside. We know it's just gonna start at one. And we're also gonna get the right multiplier equal to one as well. That way we can actually kind of just go through the array once and in a clever way, we can build up the left and right arrays at the same time. If we get n is the length of the nums, we'll get our L array, which I'm gonna call LR, and that is equal to, we're just gonna initialize it to n many zeros for now. And then R array is going to be exactly the same thing. And then we can just go through this array once here to build up both arrays. So we do for i in the range of n, and you can actually get the last index by doing j is equal to negative i minus one. Okay, by last, I don't always mean the very last. So if you had an array like one, two, three, four. What's going to happen here is on the first iteration, we'll have i as this and we'll have j as this on the last one. And then when i goes up, it'll actually make j go over here. And then when i goes over here, j will be over here. When i is here, j is over here. And they both step out of bounds at the same time. So basically it's just going forwards and backwards at the same time. Forwards is i and backwards is j. So as we said, we're immediately going to make the value for the array equal to the multiplier. So L array at i is immediately going to be the l molt. I guess this is called rr. I feel like a pirate at j. So that way we're using the right index is equal to r molt. Okay. And then we just need to multiply both of those by the current element they're looking at. l molt is going to times equals the nums at i. And can you think of what we do for r molt? r molt is going to times equals the nums at j. From there, we have both our l and r arrays built up. We just need to return, and there's multiple ways to do this, but I like to do L times R for L and R in the zip of L, R and R, R. It's very funny to say, uh, but basically we iterate both of the arrays at the exact same time, okay? And then we just make each position the multiplication of those two values. So again, each position is the multiplication of all of the stuff that's to the left and all the stuff that's to the right. And if we are to run this solution, we can see that it works. So the runtime, the time complexity for this algorithm is basically go of n because we really just as you see here we go through the array and here we just go through them like one more time we just go through both lr and rr that's just going to be o of n uh, the space complexity for this is actually not optimal this is actually o of n and there's actually a very clever uh, constant solution which i encourage you to check out yourself i think it's really cool but uh, not really in the scope for this question because it's kind of tricky so drop a like if this was helpful and have a great day guys Bye bye